Karachi and I will be leading you in the worship service this morning. I will read the light print and you will read the bold print and if you are able, please stand. Each one of us here is different. We are unique individuals. We come from various backgrounds. We come with different needs and dreams. Yet the Lord calls us to worship in unity. Praise be to God. Who bless our diversity and our unity. Amen. At this time, we would prepare for our pastoral prayer. We will begin this prayer with a moment of silence. During that moment of silence, you may call out the names of your loved ones who are standing in the need of prayer. And then I will begin the prayer, and at the end of the prayer, we will pray together the Lord's Prayer. We will begin with a moment of silence. Jermaine Farachi. Why? Gracious Lord, as we enter this time of prayer, God, we ask that you would help us to let go of what is past. Release us from anger and resentment. Free us from bitterness and help us to fill this space with the love of Christ. We praise you, O oh God, for the many wonderful things that you have poured on our lives. We pray, God, that you would help us to count our blessings and not our miseries. We offer our gratitude for the gift of love. We offer our thanks for those people in our lives who love us unconditionally. We offer our thanks for those who provide a safe place in the shelter of their unselfish love. We offer our praise for those who give, expecting nothing in return. We offer, oh God, our gratitude to those who cause us to rise to greatest selves. We offer thanks for those who help us put the pieces of our lives back together when our dreams and our hopes are shattered. Oh God, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Reveal unto us the things that's not like you, that we might be able to avoid those things. Help us to be more and more like you each and every day. Help us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to all whom we might come in contact with. Now, God, we call out those who are in need of your comforting presence. The family of Dorothy Bastion, the family of the fireman who lost his life just yesterday trying to save someone else from drowning. For his 10-year-old daughter who was there with him, who might be in a state of confusion and anger and hurt, and why her unanswered questions of why her father died trying to save somebody else. God, we pray a special prayer for all the names that are on the prayer list, all those that are sick and shut in. We pray for those that are serving in the military, oh God, that your presence would be with them, watch over them, protect them as they stand up for our country. We pray for the nation for our current situation with COVID-19. Even though there has been improvements, we pray, oh God, that a cure would be manifested, oh God, that we might be able to return to a new normal one day soon. But until that time come, help us to be, take, to be precaution, to take the necessary steps that we can keep the virus low, not spreading it. Gracious Lord, we praise you for hearing our innermost desires of our hearts. And we cast away our fears and our anxieties. We lay them all before you, knowing that you are a prayer-answering God. 
While we honor the past, O oh God, we also look forward to the future with hope and love. We thank you for all of this. We invite your presence in the midst of our worship service today. In the precious name of Christ, I pray, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. We will now sing our praise hymn, Blessed Assurance. Due to the coronavirus, the offering plate will not be passed around, but the offering plate is located at the back of the church, and you may give as you enter or exit the sanctuary. To those who have joined us online, I offer this opportunity for you to give back to God. You may write a check and send it to the address listed online, or you can click on the Donate Now button and use your bank or credit card. At this time, let us stand for our doxology. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give back a portion of what you have given us. 
And God, we ask your blessings upon the gifts that we bring unto you as we give from our hearts, O oh God, that you will bless it and multiply it. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Can you remain standing for a hymn of preparation? Breathe on me, breath of God. Our scripture lesson for today is Exodus 17, verses 8 through 16. While the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them, and Moses commanded Joshua, Choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill, holding the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whatever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Moses' arms soon became so tired, he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. So his hands held steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. After the victory, the Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder and read it aloud to Joshua. I will erase the memory of Amalek from the, under the heavens. Moses built an altar there and named it Yahweh Nashi, which means the Lord is my banner. He said they have raised their first, their first fist, I'm sorry, against the Lord's throne, so now the Lord will be at war with Amalek generation after generation. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Pastor Maurice Horn. I serve as the pastor here at St. Paul United Methodist Church, and I welcome you this morning and I hope and pray that you have been blessed thus far and that you will continue to be blessed. I've been preaching a four-part series on four necessary elements of church growth. Those four elements are change, risk, teamwork, and trust. Two weeks ago, I preached on change. On the sermon, you need to step out of the boat if you want to walk on the water. 
Last week, I preached on risk, stepping outside my comfort zone. Today, I will preach on teamwork, the importance of teamwork. Looking at the passage of scripture, we see that the children of Israel, they were on their journey in the wilderness. After 400 years in Egypt, being slaves, set free, finally on their way to the promised land. As they journeyed, they came in contact with an enemy group called the Amalekites. Moses knew that his men were inexperienced. They had never fought a battle before. Now they're faced with the most treacherous warriors that you could think of. The Amalekites were experienced warriors. So Moses knew that they was in trouble. And Moses began to call out to God. Now, you know the wonderful thing? God could have just blinked his eyes, said the word, and the Israelites would have had the skills to whoop them. Similar like on that movie, I Dream of Genie, she just blinked his eyes and boom, it's there. God could have did that. But instead, God wanted the people of Israel to be a part of this victory, and he wanted everybody all over to know that it was God that won this battle. So therefore, uh, Moses told Joshua, say, look, go take your men, and you go down in the valley, and you fight. He says, I know there are going to be some of them who's afraid, but just tell them to trust in the Lord. He says, and while they're down in the valley fighting, he said, I'm going to take my staff and I'm going to go up on a mountain and I'm going to pray to God and ask God to intercede. So Moses had his staff, shepherd's staff. He goes up to the top of the mountain and he sticks his staff up and begins to pray to God to intercede. Now, the reason Moses was on the mountain, Moses could have did this in the valley. It would have worked, but the people wouldn't have been able to see him. It's one thing about when you can see things, you're encouraged as you see it. So as Moses is standing there with the staff pointing to God, because that's where all the help was going to come from, as he was praying to God, as long as the staff was in the air, the Israelites was winning. But the battle lasted all day long. So you can imagine how difficult that had to be for Moses. So as his arm got a little tired, the staff started going this way. And every time the staff started going down, the Israelites was losing. You can imagine somebody said, Moses, we're losing. He got the staff back up again. And as he got it up again, them arms can only hold for so long. And it started going the other way. Moses, we're losing. He got the staff back up. I can imagine Moses might have said, somebody got to help me. I can't hold this thing up here like this. So at this time, I'm going to call my wife, May, to come up to give me a hand. We live in the same house, so we don't have to social distance. <laughs> she's going to come up, and she's going to be the errant and the herd. The Bible says Aaron and her came up. And first thing they did, they set a rock. Move that chair over just a little bit so I can sit on it. They set a rock because you can imagine this battle is all day. So Moses, they put a rock there. He sat down and then she, Moses and her stood on the side and held that rock. And long, held the arms. And long as Moses was sitting on the rock, his hands was in the air, they was winning the battle. If he got weak, then Aaron and her helped keep them hands together. And that's how they won the battle. Thank you, dear. That's how they won the battle. As a team, if it had not been for Aaron and her, Moses could have never held that staff up all by himself. They won the battle as a team. I looked up the definition of teamwork, and it says cooperative and coordinated effort on the part of a group of persons acting together as a team 
or in the interest of a common cause. Teamwork is a group of people working together for the same cause, helping one another. Jesus, three years ministry on this earth was not done as a solo. It was done as a team. Jesus had 12 disciples. And he began to work with them as a team. He began to teach them, give them clear instructions on what to do. And then he would send them out on a job. One time, the Bible says Jesus sent out a team of 70 disciples to go out to do the work of God. He always sent them out in at least pairs, in twos. He never sent them out as an individual. We're talking about teamwork. Teamwork is more than just a collection of people, but it's a process of give and take because it's a team. The error of that rugged individual who did everything by themselves to show how strong and how tough they was, that era is over with. We are now living in the era of teamwork. I remember reading the story of a young boy who his father told him to clean the backyard. He gave him $10. That boy was so excited. He cleaned that backyard so clean, but there was one great big old boulder that boy could not move. He said, do I have to move this out the way? He said, that's part of it. Yes, you got to move that out the way. So the little boy grabbed the boulder, mm, mm, and he couldn't move it. He said, Daddy, I can't move it. He said, try harder. Mm. He said, Daddy, it won't move. He said, you got to use a little bit more strength. He tried again. He said, I can't move it. He says, you're not giving it all you got. And finally, the little boy just started crying. He said, Daddy, I cannot move that rock. You keep telling me to use all my strength. I used it, and I still can't move it. His father said, you never asked me to help you. That's greater strength than you need. He said, all you have to do is ask me to help you. How often we are like that little boy, grunting, trying to do something, and we have a whole team and we've asked nobody for some help. Talking about the importance of teamwork. In a church, we have to work together as a team to change the world one person at a time. The teammates in the church is the preacher. The preacher have to be preach a well-balanced gospel. Somebody say, what's a well-balanced gospel? balanced gospel is a gospel that can comfort the afflicted and can afflict the comfortable. That's well balanced. Not only do we have a preacher, we have the music director and the organist and the pianist so that they can play the music so that we can sing the song and bring the melody and soothing and calmness within the worship service. We have the ushers. When you come in, somebody had to meet you at the door. Because of COVID-19, check your temperature, pass out the bulletins, and all the other things. But had to do it with a smile. If you walk in a church and the ushers are, hmm, stand still so I get your temperature. You might turn around and leave. You don't want nobody talking to you like that. The sound person, or the PowerPoint person, or the person taking the video, that's part of the team. They gotta make sure everything is together. That person has to set up and break down. It's not a matter of just showing up for church. There's a lot of work. And we have the worship leader who has to make sure that they look at what the scripture is going to be, what the songs is going to be, so that they have a familiarity as they come before you to lead worship. And then, of course, we have our congregation. The congregation is such an important part of the team because the congregation supports and participates in the ministries at the church. When they see a need and nobody's responding or see a need that they can make a difference, they step up to the plate. So when everybody works together as a team, then we can grow. One thing about COVID-19, it has caused us to focus strongly on 
online worship. You can invite people online and it's never a threat to them. It's never a danger to them. They can look at it in the morning, at night. They don't have to look at it at 9.45 when we're having worship. They can look at it at 9.45 at night if they want to. But we start inviting people to worship and whenever the COVID-19 has been cured and we can come back to worship, we hope to have another 100 people in worship with us. Amen? Because we have good teamwork. It always takes a teamwork to accomplish any great task. You ever notice that the letter I is not in team? Because there is no I's. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about God. It's about doing the work of God. You know, in sports, it takes a team to win a game. A team work. They have to work together as a team. Good basketball, football, soccer, whatever game it is, they don't just win games. They win championships. They win Super Bowls. They take it to the top. In football, you got to have a good quarterback. You got to have a good running back. You have to have good defense. You have to have good offense in order to make it to the Super Bowl and win. How many of y'all remember that great football player, Barry Sanders? He's still alive. I said remember, but he's still alive. He's, not, he's retired. He was a running back for the Detroit Lions. He was considered to be one of the greatest running backs in the history of football. But do you know he never got a Super Bowl ring? Never got a Super Bowl ring. It has been said that he didn't have a strong team and have a strong, with a strong offense and defense, and as a result of that, he never got a Super Bowl ring. Even when the Lions were leading, they couldn't keep the lead because they couldn't stop the other team from scoring. Barry Sanders was a star player that made it to the Hall of Fame because he was great. But he never won a Super Bowl ring because he was not on a team that could help take him to that Super Bowl. We're talking about teamwork. When Saul began his missionary journey, he did it with a team. Saul didn't just go out preaching. He started out with Barnabas. And him and Barnabas came into a disagreement and they split up and he got another teammate named Silas, and him and Silas journeyed through land from land to land, spreading the good news, and as he was traveling, the places where he planted the seed would write him a letter, and he wrote the letter back, and that's why we have the writings in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Galatians, Ephesians. These are all letters that Paul wrote while he was on his missionary journey. But he did it with a team. Everyone who wants to see the church grow should join the team. If you're on the team and you're not a participant, then you're just a spectator. Spectators are those who just sit down, cross their arms, don't do nothing. All they do is find fault with everything. Well, we don't want spectators. We want to raise them up so they can be a participant. They can get up and get on and be part of the team and do something so that the team can win. You know, sometimes you may not always see yourself as part of a team. You may not see all the other teammates and what they're doing, and you may be doing most of the loads yourself, but you still got to keep on going. I remember hearing a story about a man. He had a mule named Jim. And Jim, he would pull a wagon that was driven by his owner. And he would allow people to get on the wagon, and Jim would take off. But before Jim would take off, the owner would holler, Giddy up, Jim. Giddy up, Jesus. Giddy up, Sam. Giddy up, John. Giddy up, Joe. And then the mule would start moving. And one of the persons on the wagon said, Why are you calling out all those names when there's nobody there but Jim? He said, um, well, 
If Jim knew he was the only one pulling this wagon, he wouldn't pull an inch. He think he's on a team, amen? The importance of teamwork. Have you ever had to change a flat tire? That's something we all dread, but I've changed a few. I'm pretty sure if anybody here changed a flat tire or was with somebody who changed a flat tire, how long does it take to change one flat tire? Well, it depends on where you're at and when you're changing it. Could take you 10, 15, 20 minutes. Could take you 30 minutes. I don't know, but it won't be done too fast. Can you imagine how long it would take if you had to change all four tires? Well, think of this. Do you know in professional racing, they do everything as a team? Do you know how long it takes for the team to change all four tires when the car pull in and got to change all the tires? Do you know how long it takes? It takes 12 to 16 seconds for four tires to be changed because everybody got a job to do. And the moment that car pull up in there, everybody jump on it. Getting them ratchets going, going. 16 seconds, he's back on the road. Now that's what you call teamwork, amen? Well, can you imagine if the church could move like that? Good God Almighty. Because we got everybody doing what they need to do at the time that they're supposed to do it. That's what you call teamwork. There's nothing a team cannot do if they work together. Are you a team player? If you're not, I invite you to be a team player. You know, one thing every team has is a coach. The coach's job is to train the team so they can win. Now, that's not an easy job. I don't care how many teams you've coached, each team is different. And your strategy may have to be a little different. But the coach has to do a lot of research to try to find out the gifts he have and the team players he have and how they exercise them gifts and find out what the weakness of the other team so that they can overcome it. But one thing about it, I don't care if you got the greatest coach in the world, the team got to give the coach a chance to lead them to the Super Bowl, amen. When the coach gives this play, that's the play they want to go with. If they don't want to follow the coach, their chance of winning is very low. Have any of you ever seen the movie Hoosiers with Gene Hackman. The movie was made in 1986. That movie was inspired by a real life team in Illinois. And it talks about how when Gene Hackman got on the, became the coach of that team, it was a losing team. They had some good players, but it was a losing team. They could not get off that losing streak. Gene Hackman realized that the reason they can't get off that losing streak because everybody is playing solo. They got to play as a team. So he gave a rule, and that rule was called the four-pass rule. He says, from now on, before anybody shoot a ball, I want you to pass it four times. This is not a, something I'm asking you to do. I'm telling you, this is mandatory. Pass the ball four times. You can imagine how odd that was for that team. Four times, man, I got the shot now. What I need to pass the ball. He said, pass the ball four times. He came up against great resistance. And when they finally made up their mind, they was not going to do what the coach said do. One of the star players said, if y'all don't listen to the coach, then I'm not going to play. So they went on to start doing what the coach said do, even though it was difficult. They fought the shoot, they passed the ball. And they passed the ball four times before they will shoot the ball. And by passing the ball so many times, it gave the team time to find the right shot rather than just taking the first shot. And it also created the teamwork mentality where we need each other. It ain't about me, it's about the team. It don't make a difference who makes the shot. When the winning shot is made, the team win the game, amen. That team changed, and it became a winning team. And they went on a winning streak. They even made it to the championship. They didn't win the championship, but their team became a better team because they learned to work together and had great teamwork. 
That's how the church should function, as a team, so that we can work together as a team. In the scripture in Exodus 17, 18 to 16, the inexperienced Israelites won the battle against these mighty warriors, the Amalekites, because they trusted in God and they worked together as a team. If it was all based on Moses, they'd have lost because Moses couldn't hold their staff up forever. If it was all based on just the men fighting, they'd have lost because couldn't none of them fight. Amen. But because they worked together as a team, God used all that was there in a teamwork effort to give them the winning where they can win from the Amalekites. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to be on the team and part of the team and participate in the team? I'm going to close by telling you a story about a man who was blind and a man who had no legs. Both of them was on a journey, a spiritual journey, and they was in a forest. And the man who was blind, he had a stick walking down the road so he could make sure he could stay on the road. The man who had no legs, he was on a board with wheels, and he had a stick to push him and to guide him to what direction, to the left or to the right. And they traveled on that road. And that road came to a fork to where the blind man met the man with no legs. And at the fork, there was a river. They couldn't go no further. They had to cross that river. And if they didn't come up with a way to cross it, then they might as well turn around because there's no way the blind man could do it. His stick wouldn't help him going across the water. And the man on the, on the board with the wheels, he couldn't do it because when he get out in that water, that board going to sink. They sat on the edge of the river for hours trying to come up with a plan how they going to get across that river. Finally, they both jumped up at the same time, had an idea. I said jumped up but raised up because the one man didn't have no legs. He couldn't jump. They said, oh, I know what we can do. He said, I got an idea too. The blind man said, I can't see, but I got legs, good strong legs. Says, you can see and you don't have no legs. Why don't you climb on my shoulders? We can walk across the river and you tell me which way to go so I don't walk in the wrong direction. He said, that's a good idea. So sure enough, he climbed on his shoulder. He's holding a man with no legs on his shoulder. The man said, go to the left. That's it, keep it. Now go to the right. There you go. Now make a hard left. And he led him all the way across that river. When they got across the river, they sat there and they laughed and they had such a wonderful time, they was able to accomplish something. So as they were saying their farewells, getting ready to go, they both stopped and looked at each other. The man said, you know what? Crossing that river was pretty fun, and it was great. He said, I think we could just stay together, man. Why don't you just let me go ahead and stay on your shoulder, and I'll be your eyes, and you be my legs, and we can go all over this world. The man who was blind said, that's a good idea. So he jumped up on his shoulder, and they walked all over the rest of their life as a team. The blind man was the legs, and the man with no legs was the eyes. That's what teamwork would do. So now I hope we can see the importance of teamwork. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Amen. The actual lights were now extinguished. The candles as we prepare to be dismissed. And as we are dismissed, may we carry the light of Christ with us everywhere we go.
gracious Lord, we thank you for everything that has been said and everything that has been done. Help us, O oh God, that we might be an active part of the team, O oh God, to do what needs to be done at the time it needed to be done. O oh God, give us encouragement, give us faith, and give us hope that we might be able to see how you would bless us, move us, and allow growth to take place in the precious name of Christ. Now as we prepare to go our separate ways, bring us back at the appointed time. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. May all God's people say amen and amen. amen.